Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming in the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. John 15:18 through 20 If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Christians would be persecuted as we read in Matthew 24:9. And Luke 21 12 Matthew 24 9 then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake Luke 21 12 but before all these things they will lay their hands on you and persecute you delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons you will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake happy Columbus Day remember Columbus Day that's the day that we celebrate the discovery of the new world by Christopher Columbus and all that happened after which was the creation of the freest and most humane society in the history of man. We're still celebrating it, but we're also assessing what happened to that society because it is changing. So we want to tell you the story of a man called Paul Vaughn leading off tonight. Paul Vaughn does not fit the profile of a terrorist. You'd never guess. He's 55 years old. He's a former pastor who now runs a small internet service business in Middle Tennessee. He and his wife are gentle people. They're faithful Christians. They spend most of their time raising their 11 children. So last Wednesday morning at about 7.15, bucolic scene at the Vaughn household. Several of Paul Vaughn's children are standing in the front yard about to head to school. Suddenly, out of nowhere, their world falls down around them. A team of FBI agents armed with automatic rifles swoops in in SUVs and begins pounding on the front door of the family home. Inside the house, Paul Vaughn is watching this and he's shocked. As he said later, when I opened the door and saw the guns pointed at me, I asked them what they wanted. They said they wanted me. The agents led Paul Vaughn away. Inside the house, his wife, who'd been at the back with their newest child, an 18-month-year-old baby, ran to the front door. Confused and terrified, she asked what anyone would ask, who are you and why are you taking my husband away? We don't need to guess about the exchange because it's on tape. Here's what it looked like. But if you're not going to let me, then I'll, I'll just... No, I want to know why you were banging on my door with a gun. Uh, you're not going to tell me anything? No, do not. I, you... I, I, I tried. Man. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. You did not try. This is not acceptable. Can I have your name? You're not going to give me your name. You're not going to give me any information. Body armor, little watch caps, automatic weapons held at the ready, taking off with her husband. Why are you taking him? Who are you? She asks. But of course, they completely ignore her. No, we're not going to answer. We tried when they didn't. They don't have to answer because when your husband is a domestic terrorist, the government doesn't owe you an answer to the most basic questions. So Paul Vaughn, we now learn, is a terrorist. But what did he do? You may be wondering that by this point. 
Well, as the Department of Justice explained later in a statement, Paul Vaughn opposes abortion. And not just in a quiet, personal way. That would be bad enough. Paul Vaughn is outspoken about his views on abortion. He still believes, being 55, that this is a free country with a Bill of Rights that allows you the freedom to say what you want and even have protests on behalf of your ideas. He believes that was the freedom that built this country. So a year and a half ago, in March of 2021, Vaughn and 10 volunteers from a Christian pro-life group in Tennessee staged a protest at an abortion clinic in Mount Juliet. Now, we don't need to speculate about what happened next, and that's a good thing for Paul Vaughn. It was broadcast live on Facebook by one of the volunteers. That would be 73-year-old Chester Gallagher. Watch this. So you live in the United States and you watch nightly the chaos in your city. Buildings burning, people being pushed in front of subway trains, people getting knocked in the face on the street for no reason, carjackings, murders, up in every city in America. So you look at that and you think, is that really it? That's why armed FBI agents with automatic rifles arrived at Paul Vaughn's home last Wednesday because of that? Because more than a year ago, a group of Christians, many of them elderly, sang hymns? Yeah. That's it. That's what he did wrong. Now, we should note that we only have this video evidence because of the hard work of Maya Cathal at Town Hall, which broke this story. God bless. Without this documentary evidence, without this video, you might be tempted to believe the Biden administration when it tells you that Paul Vaughn, quote, used force and physical obstruction to injure, intimidate, and interfere with employees of the abortion clinic. But he didn't. He didn't use physical force. He sang hymns. But for doing that, Joe Biden's Department of Justice now tells us, Paul Vaughn deserves to spend 11 years in prison. 11 years. Vaughn's, quote, co-conspirators from that day in March of 2021, meaning other pro-life activists, are also facing long prison sentences. This group would include 87-year-old Eva Edel. Now, if that name sounds familiar to you, it's because she is something of a celebrity in Christian circles, pro-life circles. And that's because she survived a Yugoslav concentration camp before escaping to this country, where she spent decades advocating against abortion. She has seen firsthand what happens when government denies the essential humanity of a person. In this picture, you can see her sitting in front of an abortion clinic as a police officer towers over her. Within seconds, two officers are shoving this 87-year-old into the back of a car. Now, again, contrast this with the country you watch every night on television or the one you experience if you live in a city where people are afraid to go to the grocery store, where Wendy's burned down in the name of civil rights and no one does a thing about it. Watch how they're treated. Same thing happened to 58-year-old Heather Idoni back in March of 2021. It took a whole team of police officers to remove her. Really, you wonder why. How dangerous does she look? Then there was 57-year-old evangelist Calvin John Zastro. He was also arrested that day in March. Here's a video he shot discussing it. When we have national revival, this is what every abortion clinic's gonna look like. Right here, feel the rubble. Not through violence, through peace, but through God bringing the high places down. So let's go show up in front of those high places, trust him, rescue, preach, sing, pray, and see this happen to the rest of them. Now, you may not share his views. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But be as honest as you can with yourself. Does that guy look dangerous? And if so, compared to what? There are a lot of dangerous people wandering around, completely unimpeded. In fact, they're celebrated by this administration. Is that guy a dangerous person? Of course he's not. He's a Christian. Maybe you're not a Christian. Maybe you're pro-choice. But even if you are, you are not, if you're being completely honest, going to conclude that that guy poses a threat to you or this country because he doesn't. And now there's his daughter, who's 24 years old, Eva Darlene Zastro. She was also apprehended at the clinic with her father. Here's her violent manifesto. I've seen the pictures before, and I heard that it was murder before, but the connection went from 
knowing it here to knowing it in my heart. I just praise God that he gave me the opportunity to rescue and um, Lord willing, abortion will end. So imagine sitting back at Department of Justice headquarters, assessing that video and saying to yourself, you know what? They need an armed FBI raid. Get out the body armor. That's a terror manifesto. Apparently they did conclude that because now Joe Biden's Justice Department, the FBI, to its eternal shame, is rounding up everyone associated with Paul Vaughn's entirely nonviolent Christian organizations. Take a look at the mug shots from the FBI's investigation into this event in March of 2021. It's on your screen right now. They're telling you, the FBI is telling you, bragging about it, that these people are dangerous. <laughs> and of course, you know what they know, which is in America 2022, whether you're dangerous or not depends almost entirely on who you voted for. There are people in this country who molest children. True fact. You are hearing now that they are minor attracted persons. You have people on television trying to minimize the gravity of child molestation. Why is that? Well, because they're probably Biden voters. That's the assumption anyway. Meanwhile, those people in the mugshots on the screen, those are the terrorists. Keep in mind that Biden voters who've actually killed people are facing less jail time than these Christian protesters. In Illinois, BLM rioter Matthew Rupert received fewer than 11 years for setting fire to a cell phone store in Minneapolis. Oh, really? 26-year-old Montez Terrell Lee received fewer than 11 years of prison for setting fire to the Maxit pawn shop in Minneapolis, a fire that wound up killing a 30-year-old man. He got less time than Paul Vaughn is facing. 20-year-old Samuel Elliott Fry was sentenced to just over two years in federal prison for setting fire to a health food store. But it was for a good cause. It was for Joe Biden, so not a big deal. All of those crimes and countless others that are happening around the country at a scale we have not seen in our lifetimes, all of those crimes are, be treat are being treated as less serious offenses than a man who sang hymns in an abortion clinic. So what's going on here? Well, a day before the FBI's raid on Paul Vaughn, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris announced their new policy, which is pro-lifers, because they disagree with Joe Biden and upset the base, are now terrorists. Watch. We believe, and I certainly believe, that a woman should have the freedom to make decisions about her own body and that her government should not be making those decisions for her. Today, extremist so-called leaders are attacking the freedom and liberty of millions of women. We're not going to sit by and let Republicans throughout the country enact extreme policies to threaten access to basic health care. My message to folks across the country who are worried about what we're seeing is, is uh, first that we have your back. So you think to yourself as you watch something like that, well, of course, there's an election coming up in just a few weeks, and a lot of the Democratic base believes that abortion is the key to freedom and happiness, and they're very upset about the Roe v. Wade decision. Roe v. Wade is no longer the law of the land. And so Biden and Harris and the rest of the leaders of that party are pandering to them. It's okay, we're on your side. What you don't think is you watch something like that, that its effect will mean sending guys with automatic weapons to Paul Vaughn's house and scaring the hell out of his 11 children. You never would imagine that in real life, people who sang hymns in an abortion clinic would be facing 11 years in prison. So you have to ask, since the parallels are very clear, this is effectively the modern version of Bull Connor's fire hoses and German shepherds, has a single Democrat pointed out that this is insane? That an 11 year sentence for hymn singing might be a little punitive? Has Sandy Cortez said anything? I mean, wait a second, we're pro-choice and everything, but 11 years for a 55-year-old father of 11? Has Rashida Tlaib? What about George Gascon or Larry Krasner? The guys who think, well, we put way too many people in prison, we gotta pull back a little bit. We gotta rehabilitate them. What about the compassion mongers at CNN or MSNBC? Have they said a word about this? As their country becomes totalitarian, have they even noticed? We checked. No. The only clip we could find was Nancy Pelosi, where she endorses violence against her political enemies. Here she is. There has been a number of attacks on, uh, on, on churches, on uh, crisis pregnancy centers. Re Republicans are going after <clears throat> Democrats for not saying anything, and they're saying that, that your rhetoric is contributing to these attacks on these crisis pregnancy centers. Well, let what me are just say this. this? A woman has a right to choose, to live up to her responsibility. It's up to her, her doctor, her family, her husband, her, her significant other, and her God. 
I'm a very Catholic person, and I believe in every woman's right to make her own decisions. First of all, you're not a Catholic. I mean, this is ridiculous. Let's stop pretending. Second, you don't believe at all in the right to choose. You applauded as nurses got fired because they didn't want to take the mandatory vax because they didn't want to hurt their own fertility. They wanted to have children maybe someday. And you thought that was great. So it wasn't their body, their choice. You're a liar and a fraud. You're not a Christian. Be quiet. But what's really stunning is nobody, the people who've lectured us for years, the criminal justice system is just too mean, that MS-13 are children of God. They don't have a problem with this at all. The people who claim to hate mass incarceration, it turns out are strongly for the mass incarceration of anyone who disagrees with them. And they're doing it. As Julie Kelly has reported relentlessly, judges have sentenced dozens of January 6th defendants to months in prison followed by probation. Why? Oh, because they entered a public building as police officers stood by, lifted the ropes for them. What was that about, by the way? Don't ask, shut up. They belong in jail. As of this week, dozens of January 6th defendants are still being held in pretrial detention. No one notices. Where's the Republican Party on that? <laughs> Nowhere. At the same time, the FBI has made zero arrest, none, to protect pro-lifers from actual violence. Not him singing, firebombing. The Compass Care Pregnancy Services Center in Buffalo was firebombed in June. No arrests have been made. In fact, the FBI seized surveillance footage from the facility and never gave it back. This building was up in flames this morning when police and firefighters arrived, and this is the aftermath. Broken windows, shattered glass, and graffiti, which the CEO says gives him an indication as to who he thinks is behind this. We're able to serve 25... CEO Jim Hardin says this didn't come as a complete shock. Recently, Compass Care has been receiving threats online and in person. The graffiti on the side of the building says Jane was here. And Hardin says he thinks the abortion rights group Jane's Revenge is behind the attack. It's a reference to Jane's Collective, which provided underground abortions in Chicago in the 1960s. The group took responsibility for firebombing a pro-life facility in Madison, Wisconsin last month. Hardin says it'll take months to repair the $100,000 worth of damage to the facility. See how this works to so a group aligned with Joe Biden? Firebombs, they're building firebombs. And the FBI does nothing. Instead, they send agents with automatic rifles to the home of a 55-year-old man with 11 children because he sung hymns in an abortion clinic. This is too much, actually. There's always going to be disparities in justice. There's always going to be disparities in law enforcement. You have to believe they're unintentional. This is not unintentional. This is intentional. It's right in our face, and it's completely unacceptable. Chris Ray, who runs the FBI, purportedly a good guy, a decent man who cares about justice, what does he think of this? Is this all right? Sending FBI agents with automatic weapons to arrest a hymn singer? So we called Chris Ray's, Ray's office today and asked a simple question. Are you okay with this? Do you know this is happening? You run the FBI. No response. Just like Paul Vaughn's wife, to shut the door. We don't have to answer your questions. These are political raids, and they're exactly what the most recent FBI whistleblower, Steve Friend, warned about last month. The FBI didn't respond to those warnings from one of its own agents. It just suspended Steve Friend. So the raids are continuing. People need to see this. This is going too far, and it's getting scary. Paul Vaughn, who was arrested in front of his many children, joins us now. He's joined by his attorney, Peter Breen, who's a senior counsel and VP at the Thomas More Society. Thank you both very much. Paul, first to you. Um, I, I have to wonder, what did your children think of this? Well, Doctor, they, uh, you know, there's various thoughts and uh, processing going on as they're uh, dealing with this and trying to uh, work through what happened. Uh, fortunately, as a Christian family, we do a lot of studying about historic Christianity and missionaries in the past and persecution that has happened in the church. So they're familiar with stories. They know there are people who have been martyred throughout history. They know they've been persecuted and, and picked on by bully tyrants uh, just in other parts of history, just like they are being in America today. But you're not allowed to unleash the FBI on an entire religion, are you? Absolutely not. And, and don't think because they've been trained that makes it okay. When, when, I, when my kids go out to the car to go to school and the FBI pulls up armed, running to the door, and one of them goes to the kids and holds the kids with a long gun outside of my driveway and does not let them go into the house, 
That is absolutely, as my wife said in the video, unacceptable. Well, it's, it's one of the most shocking things I think I've ever seen. I, I have to ask you, so the FBI, the Department of Justice, I can barely say that phrase with a straight face, is claiming that you're a, a, a violent extremist who is a physical threat to others. Do you embrace violence? Have you ever committed violence? What are they talking about? No, I have no idea. Uh, that's, yeah. There's absolutely no evidence of that. Other, the only place that is ever even seen is in the documents that they made up and uh, used to justify in their mind and through the um, justice system, the ones that signed off on this needed some yep. kind of justification in their own minds to, uh, to go after peaceful people yep. that disagreed with them politically. But, but Peter Breen, thank you uh, for working on this case, for defending Paul Vaughn. Um, do, do you think that this is actually gonna go to trial? Well, uh, Tucker, when you've got a federal prosecutor after you, I mean, we always have to plan for that. You know, Paul wasn't even arrested by the local police for trespassing. Uh, and, but those who did, uh, who, who were uh, arrested, uh, were leaning on the tradition of Dr. Martin Luther King. He himself was inspired by Mahatma Gandhi. I mean, this is the great tradition of American civil disobedience. Yeah. And it's not the sort of thing that you turn into a 10-year felony. Uh, Paul himself, uh, we believe we have very strong defenses and hope to, to hope to beat these charges at trial. And I hope you do so with a country that rises up on your side, because this is, he wasn't even arrested for trespassing at the scene, and over a year later, they send the FBI to his house in front of his children. It's really just beyond. I appreciate both of you coming on tonight. Thank you so much. Brothers and sisters, persecution is coming. Believers in Jesus Christ believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe homosexuality is a sin, and marriage is between one man and one woman. We believe in the sanctity of life and that abortion is murder and is a sin. We believe God created us male and female and it is a sin to identify as a transgender. We believe Jesus is the only way to heaven and that believing in any other way will send a person to hell. Get yourself spiritually prepared because true Christians will be persecuted in the United States like no other time in history. This persecution will be based off of what the world perceives to be moral and right and not what the Bible says. The sad thing is that many people who profess to be Christ followers will go the way of the world. These professing Christians are called lukewarm in the book of Revelation and are not saved. The world will persecute true Christians and scripture tells us the lukewarm Christians will persecute them as well as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and 10. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended will betray one another and will hate one another. Many who professed faith in Jesus as the Messiah in easier times will deny him and cooperate in exposing those who are true believers. The external hatred from the world puts all true believers in Christ under pressure. This in turn produces internal hatred among the professing Christian community during the tribulation. When the pressure comes, those who are not genuine believers will do three things, fall away, deliver up one another and hate one another. Matthew 24, 9 and 10 lay out a future time of great persecution for true believers in Jesus. Many in the church will avoid this persecution by betraying fellow disciples in Christ to the persecutors. Persecution is coming. Jason Whitlock is the host of Fearless and a keen observer of linguistic reality. He joins us tonight. Jason Whitlock, thanks so much for coming on. This is very serious and, and part of it when I was listening to you, I started thinking about biblical scripture and I started thinking about where the Democrats are and their godless policies that they're beholden to. And I started thinking about Romans 1, uh, verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And that's what we're witnessing. We're watching a group yes. of people that think they're the smartest people in the history of the planet. They think that they don't need God. They think that God's truth is irrelevant and they're becoming fools led by fools. They have re reprobate minds. They, their minds are given to a wickedness that happens when you ignore God's logic. That's also from Romans, verse 28, if you guys want to go look it up. It's so obvious to everybody, even their peers, even their supporters, someone like a Bill Maher, longtime comedian, big platform, big brand, always the leftist, we're watching him pivot in real time. 
to mocking his own base. And it's because that's how outlandish and insane and how corrupted their minds are and how foolish they look that he can't resist week after week after week making fun of these people. They think they're the smartest people on the planet. They think they're smarter than God. They think they can decide who's a man and a woman. They think they can castrate our kids. They think that they can uh, drag our kids to drag shows. They think that God doesn't matter. They're fools and we're witnessing it. And you're exposing it night after night and I love you for it. There's one group pushing us towards this insanity. There's one group allowing our borders to be unguarded and letting criminals just flood our communities and, and border towns. It's, it's obvious what's I, going on. Romans 1, 18 through 25. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshiped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Romans chapter 1 tells us God has revealed to mankind that He is the Creator of all things, and that He has made it known to mankind that they are without excuse through His creation that He exists. God demands that we worship Him and recognize Him as the Creator. And when a society does not glorify Him as God, He gives them up to three phases of judgment. Romans 1 verse 24 says, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts. The first phase of judgment is an impure heart. The second phase of judgment is of the body, verses 26 and 27. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. The third phase of judgment is in verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind, to do those things which are not fitting. First, the heart is rotten, then the body follows, and then the mind goes. The moral law of God written on the heart has literally been stomped out and replaced with cultural immorality. Immorality now goes in every direction. The mind is corrupt. People don't think right. They advocate all the wretched things and depreciate all the virtuous things. And what flows out of this pornographic, homosexual, depraved culture? All evil, verses 29 through 32. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Verse 32 brings Romans chapter 1 to an end with a very bleak view of human nature. The point of the last half of the verse is to show that many people not only do things that they know deserve death, but also entice others to do them and approve when they do. In other words, the end point of depravity is not just the love affair with sin, but the desire to bring others with you to destruction. It's not just that people choose death for themselves in the passion of sin, but that they become suicidal at the spiritual level and assist others in eternal self-destruction by approving their sin. We are watching this play out right before our very eyes. They think that they don't need God. They think that God's truth is irrelevant. Is there such a thing as absolute truth? The unsaved hold the view there is no right or wrong. Therefore, whatever feels or seems right at the time and in that situation is right. Christians hold the view that there are indeed absolute realities and standards that define what is true and what is not. To the unsaved, 
Tolerance has become the one cardinal virtue of the postmodern society, the one absolute, and therefore, intolerance is the only evil. Any dogmatic belief, especially a belief in absolute truth, is viewed as intolerance, the ultimate sin to an unbeliever. If there is absolute truth, then there are absolute standards of right and wrong, and we are accountable to those standards. This accountability is what people are really rejecting when they reject absolute truth. The denial of absolute truth and the cultural relativism that comes with it are the logical result of a society that has embraced the theory of evolution as the explanation for life. If evolution is true, then life has no meaning, we have no purpose, and there cannot be any absolute right or wrong. Man is then free to live as he pleases and is accountable to no one for his actions. Yet, no matter how much sinful men deny the existence of God and absolute truth, they still will someday stand before God in judgment. The Bible declares this in Romans 1, 19 through 22, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Is there any evidence for the existence of absolute truth? Yes, there is the human conscience, that certain something within us that tells us the world should be a certain way, that some things are right and some things are wrong. Our conscience convinces us there is something wrong with suffering, pain, and evil, and it makes us aware that love, generosity, compassion, and peace are positive things for which we should strive. The Bible describes the role of the human conscience as we read in Romans 2, 14 through 16. For when Gentiles, who do not have the law, by nature do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves, who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves, their thoughts accusing or else excusing them in the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. God has revealed his truth to us through his word, the Bible. Knowing absolute truth is only possible through a personal relationship with the one who claims to be the truth, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way, the only truth, the only life, and the only path to God. The fact that absolute truth does exist points us to the truth that there is a sovereign God who created the heavens and the earth and who has revealed himself to mankind in order that we might know him personally through his son, Jesus Christ. That is the absolute truth. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. When a person comes to know Jesus as their Savior, they are brought into a relationship with God that guarantees their salvation as eternally secure. To be clear, salvation is more than saying a prayer or making a decision for Christ. Salvation is a sovereign act of God, whereby an unregenerate sinner is washed, renewed, and born again by the Holy Spirit, as we read in John 3.3 3 and Titus 3.5. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. When salvation occurs, God gives the forgiven sinner a new heart and puts a new spirit within him, as we read in Ezekiel 36, 26. 
I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. The Spirit will cause the saved person to walk in obedience to God's word as we read in Ezekiel 36, 27 and James 2, 26. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So what about repentance? Repentance is not a work we do to earn salvation. No one can repent and come to God unless God draws that person to himself. As we read in John 6:44, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Repentance is something God gives. It is only possible because of his grace. All of salvation, including repentance and faith, is a result of God drawing us, opening our eyes, and changing our hearts. God's long-suffering leads us to repentance, and so does his kindness, as we read in 2 Peter 3.9 and Romans 2.4. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 declares, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Works are not the cause of salvation. Works are the evidence of salvation. Faith in Christ always results in good works. The person who claims to be a Christian, but lives in willful disobedience to Christ, has a false or dead faith and is not saved. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. That is why John the Baptist called people to produce fruit in keeping with repentance, as we read in Matthew 3.8. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. A person who has truly repented of his sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of a changed life as we read in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. A person who has not repented of their sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of the works of the flesh, as we read in Galatians 5.19-21. through Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. A person who has crucified the flesh and belongs to Christ will give evidence of the Spirit, as we read in Galatians 5.22-24. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Believers are born again, regenerated when they believe. For a Christian to lose his salvation, he would have to be unregenerated. The Bible gives no evidence that the new birth can be taken away. The Holy Spirit indwells all believers, as we read in John 14.17. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him or knows Him, but you know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit baptizes all believers into the body of Christ, as we read in 1 Corinthians 12.13. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For a believer to become unsaved, he would have to be unindwelt, and detached from the body of Christ. John 3.15 states that whoever believes in Jesus Christ will have eternal life. If you believe in Christ today and have eternal life, but lose it tomorrow, then it was never eternal at all. Hence, if you lose your salvation, the promises of eternal life in the Bible would be in error. Scripture says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God 
that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Remember, the same God who saved you is the same God who will keep you. Once we are saved, we are always saved. Praise God, our salvation is most definitely, eternally secure. Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready!